seemed like the whole world watched the Cathedral of Notre Dame burn this week. And there was a great consternation among Catholics and non-Catholics alike. And I forget the figure, but um, it sounds like uh, donations are pouring in from all around the world to rebuild it. And I heard the word a treasure used quite a lot this week. The cathedral itself was a treasure. The things, there were treasures in the cathedral. And even the um, um, committedly secular French officials um, described it, that this is a national treasure. And President Macron uh, vowed to have it rebuilt in, I think, five years. It reminded me of a homily that uh, then Pope Benedict gave at the uh, St. Anne Shrine, I believe it is, I don't know the official title, in Altötting, in, down in Bavaria, in the southern part of Germany. And in the homily, apparently the um, uh, Bishop uh, Schrammel, uh, whom I don't know really, uh, it used to be a place uh, with great uh, art and other um, treasures in it. But apparently, uh, the bishop then um, moved those out and made this shrine into a uh, uh, place of perpetual Eucharistic adoration. And so there was um, an evening prayer. Uh, the Pope se uh, celebrated evening prayer with the local bishop, Bishop Schramm, and seminarians and priests um, of the Diocese of Altötting. And he, this is part of his homily. Thanks to Bishop Schramm, Altötting now has a new treasury. Where once the treasures of the past were kept, precious historical and religious items, there is now a place for the church's true treasure, the permanent presence of the Lord in his sacrament. In one of his parables, the Lord speaks of a treasure hidden in the field. Whoever finds it sells all he has in order to buy that field because the hidden treasure is more valuable than anything else. The hidden treasure the good greater than any other good is the kingdom of God. It is Jesus himself, the kingdom in person. In the sacred host, he is present, the true treasure always waiting for us. And that last line and a half or something is um, is written, uh, you know, scripted outside the little chapel over at the uh, cathedral, uh, the, the uh, seminary over in, Sem in uh, Cincinnati. And I thought about that, the true treasure. I would rather, and you all know, <laughs> some of you anyway, probably most of you, know how much I love churches, especially cathedrals and especially these great Gothic cathedrals with their stunning uh, stained glass windows and other art. And it's one of the reasons why I've been doing these pilgrimages for 10 years with you, to try to um, open up your um, minds to some of the great art and beauty in our churches. But I'll take this church 
with the Blessed Sacrament over Notre Dame or Sacre-Cœur or uh, Saint-Denis or whatever cathedral you want to name without the Blessed Sacrament. I'll take my little chapel in the basement of the rectory with the Blessed Sacrament over any place in the world without it. It really is our true treasure, the Eucharist. Not because it's a thing, because it is Jesus. Jesus is contained in the Eucharist and where he is, our life is. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life within you. And so, wherever he is, we should be, and should want to be, you know. So tonight, as we begin our triduum, first we look to the cross, right? We should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Cross will follow us, or rather, will follow the cross throughout the whole Triduum. But from the cross comes the, the Eucharist. Right? Comes the body of Christ given up for us. Comes the blood of Christ poured out for us. What we call the Eucharist is our life, is our truest and highest treasure.